I'm Cape Joel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we are taking a closer look at Green Arrow number 13. Oliver Queen has been branded an Emerald Outlaw, and now he'll need to defend himself if he wants to continue his good work. All this and more, let's hop on in and find out what happens next, shall we? Alrighty then, so as we join the comic, Ollie and Dinah are at the beach. Ollie goes out of his way to talk about how much he loves Seattle as a city. You got the oceans, you got the mountains, you got this amazing culture. Yeah, I mean, Seattle's pretty great, I guess. You know, you got grunge music and Starbucks and everything. I just, you know, there's it no Star City or anything. It was pretty cool, I guess. This nice little moment off is shattered, however, when our two heroes see that one of the talking head newswomen who was having a lot of negative stuff to say about Oliver Queen is taken away in an ambulance. Worse still, as she was almost murdered with an arrow, the cops jumped to the conclusion that it was G.A. who did it, trying to silence any dissenting voices out there. In fact, Seattle PD is super not a fan of Green Arrow right now after a viral video featuring him beating up a dirty cop has gone all over the world and made them all look bad. This means not even the good cops are willing to stand up and fight on Ollie's behalf right now. Oh hey, and speaking of dirty cops, you remember Officer Nodding, the guy who actually got beaten up by Green Arrow? Well, he gets suspended without pay and we discover he's actually the one heading up that urban kill squad. Apparently just brutalized the disenfranchised behind a badge wasn't enough for this guy and his friends, and so they decided to dress up in hell gas cosplay and go around killing people. Green Arrow and Black Canary return to their forest hideout to go over their game plan. I like this panel too, because we actually see them making arrows. Fife even saying, hey Ollie, you're not rich anymore, so maybe you should think about retrieving some of these arrows. I mean, you're all about recycling, right? It's actually Diggle, who I don't think we've seen outside of military fatigue since this whole series started, who actually comes up with a pretty interesting idea. He says whoever pulled off these arrow-themed murders must have been a master archer, and they know way too many of those. As he puts it, Shadow isn't exactly that trustworthy. Imiko already betrayed him once before and is currently MIA. Then there's Roy Harper, the sidekick. Man, you really have it out for Roy, don't you, Diggle? And lastly, ugh, Tommy Merlin, who's still going by the stupid moniker Dark Archer. Seriously, if Flash could get the original reverse Flash Eobard Thawne back, why can't Green Arrow get the original Merlin back? Why is the stupid TV show inspired pastiche version of Merlin still canon? Okay, rant over. Green Arrow decides to meet this Arrow killer off at the pass by trying to find another person who spoke illy of him in the media, and he ends up finding a sports celebrity who also just so happens to be backing the Trump-esque politician running for mayor who is himself also in the pocket of Broderick, the person who's currently running Queen Industries. I'll freely admit I'm not up to date on my sports ball. Is this football player guy supposed to represent someone in the real world that I don't know about. G.A. decides to stake out the big game in hopes that the killer will show himself or herself. They do, unfortunately, they fire their arrow so quick G.A. is unable to react. This also means an entire arena sees Ollie pretty much red-handed as the comic ends. Green Arrow number 13 was a cool little story. It's interesting to see Ollie fight to protect his superhero image while also grappling with maybe bringing back his civilian persona. This is another story, too, where all of Team Arrow feels nice and useful. Fife does stuff, Black Canary does stuff, even Diggle throws some good ideas around. Heck, this is also the first time they tease Roy a Harper Arsenal and mention him by name. You know I love that. Overall, I'd give this one a 7.5 out of 10. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching my newest video. I hope you enjoyed it, and while you're here, why not check out another video I have on offer? Or maybe if you're feeling in a supportive mood, you want to like or subscribe. And if you want to support the creation of more videos just like this one, then please, by all means, check out the Cape Joel Patreon. A little bit goes a very long way, and I will see you all next time.